Hey y'all, welcome back to Conversations with Carrie. How you doing? You know, this time I haven't waited as long to talk to y'all and I got some goodness for you. And can we also say that I am on the road to no Invisalign. All I'll have to wear at night is my, um, it's my retainer. And if you saw my previous videos, you already know that me and the Invisalign is a thing. Um, but I'm really proud of the progress. Okay. Anyway, uh, I wanted to share what I actually recently wrote about on my blog, CarrieLee.com. As you know, I like to write and do my videos. Um, but listen, it, this is kind of like a book review at the same time. I've been reading Jackie Hill Perry, Upon Waking, and it's a 60 day devotional. And I, like I'm, I'm a devotional fan that helps me have like structure to my day and my time with the Lord and she sets this devotional up so that she makes it clear that this should not be your only Bible moment like this is just merely an appetizer and after you read it the goal is hopefully you have the hunger to dive more into your word to learn more about what Jesus said and to really like research whatever she's talking about but this is one of those moments when I was reading this and I was like oh that just smacked me in my head like she it, it's like the Holy Spirit was like this is what I want you to take from this and I was like oh I gotta share this with y'all so on day 40 the scripture that she uses as the foundation is um, Psalms 106 verses 12 to 14 and it says then they believed his words they sang his praise but they soon forgot his words they did not wait for his counsel but they had a wanton craving in the wilderness and put God to the test in the desert. So what she talks about here is like how Israel just really complained. The hungrier they got when they were in the, in the wilderness, um, they began to grumble and complain quite a bit and how quickly they forgot about like what God had done. And she talks about like just how they were identifying the problem and praising it repeatedly uh, by its name and I'm just like she's so poetic in this but at the same time she keeps it very real I don't know it's, it's great how she sets it up but what she was talking about is that they were so hungry that they forgot how bad slavery in Egypt was they felt like well shoot I'm so hungry at least uh, back in Egypt I had my leeks and I had my garlic and I had my bread or whatever it was and she actually says a couple phrases here that I was like ooh, like I've been there. So let, I'm going to give you the phrase and then tell you what I'm talking about. So she says, um, the body will provoke us into missing a place we weren't even happy in. Because again, we're so hungry, the body will make us seem like we love this place, even though we really didn't. And then it says, the hunger within changed the way they thought about their previous condition. And when I read that, I was just like, oh, I could just close this now and go on by my business. Because this is when I'm talking to my single ladies and single men, y'all too. Uh, but there have been times in my single season that I got so hungry for affection. I got so hungry for wanting attention, wanting to go out on a date and just wanting to be wanted that I let that hunger for what I desired make me forget why I'm single. <laughs> It made me forget what I walked away from in that relationship with the help of the Lord. It made me forget what all my ex exes um, provided that I was just so busy because I'm so hungry. I glorify what I thought they provided. I mean, listen, there's been times when I've been thinking like, oh, I could go for, you know, going out on a date or something. And I'm thinking about calling up such and such. I ain't going to put nobody on blast, y'all. I ain't messy like that. But anyway, um, call up such and such so that I can, you know, feel desired. At least he'll take me out or I'll get a free meal. If you ain't never been there before, bless you. But I've been there where I'm like, I'll go out with you just to get a free meal. But that's not me anymore. Thank the Lord. But there are times where I've been so hungry for what I thought I was missing in my single season that I would make the text. I, I would make the phone call. I would answer the phone call just to have that person around again. Only afterwards to feel like, well, what was the point of that? And I'm talking about I'll make the text and make the late night text, if you know what I mean. And it's like afterwards, I, I've never felt like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. That was so rewarding. No, my hunger straight deceived me. My, my desire, because our body and our feelings are real. However, they are very deceptive if they do not come under submission of the Holy Spirit. And just like the Israelites, they were so busy glorifying what was in slavery, forgetting that you were being beat and having to make bricks and working all day. You forgetting all that just because you, you missed the garlic and you missed the leeks and the thing, different things you were eating. And now you're in the wilderness having to live off the land. 
And I'm like, I don't want to be that person. In my single season, I do not want to be the, oh man, I miss, I miss the way he used to talk to me. I miss all the hand-holding moments. No, but do you miss the heartbreak? Do you miss the lies? Do you miss the miscommunication or the lack of communication to have you wondering, does he like me or does he not like me? Nah, boo, I don't miss none of that. Because let me tell you, when I be sleeping in my bed, y'all be like laid out. <laughs> completely in my bed because that it's it's just me I ain't sleeping with no worries I ain't got no worries about somebody not answering my phone call or whatever it might be the things that I worried about in my single season and I cannot be so deceived by what I think I'm missing that I go back to that no honey I enjoy my peace and my contentment way too much for that um, but what I'm saying is that we can't be deceived by our hunger we can't be deceived by what our body is craving and thinking that the previous stuff was better than what we have right now. The blessing and the deliverance that the Lord, I'll, I'll speak for myself, what the Lord brought me out of, I'm not going back to that. <laughs> Just because I want my booty rubbed. Just keeping it all the way real. <laughs> I'm not going back to that. But I think about how Israel, and we are so much like the children of Israel. When I read that story, I see myself. I see myself being deceived by what I think I'm missing and not seeing the miraculous work of the Lord. Because don't forget, they had just came from a, a, a Red Sea moment. The Lord had just parted the Red Sea. And I don't want to go back to the moment when the Lord has freed my heart of the chains that came with fornication and um, lies and everything else. I don't want to put those chains back on. So I want to encourage you that you don't have to do the same either. Because as we move forward, we can, we can always remember what the Lord has done for us. And yes, we may get hungry at times, but submit that hunger and deny our flesh under the power of the Holy Spirit and he will guide and direct your path so you don't hunger the things of the past, but instead you look forward for the plans and the future and the hope that the Lord has for you. Because that ex, he, he, he's doing something different. But Jesus, honey, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that's what I'm gonna hang my hat on. I'm coming on here to encourage you that you do not have to go back to what you thought was better. The Lord has better planned for you up ahead if you would just stay the course. Don't grow weary and well doing, okay? I promise the Lord has something for you because that's what he promises in his word. So y'all, again, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to talk to you again soon. Take care.